All right, guys. Uh, so as you already know, I have had issues with my Tasmoda devices. Um, I posted a video last week on how you can reboot all your Tasmoda devices because that seemed to fix some of my issues. Uh, if I was doing a lot of maintenance and home assistant, uh, you know, and I uh, I would lose connection between home assistant and those devices for some odd reason. I, I really don't know. So, of course, if you didn't see that video, check it out here. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, some of you guys provided feedback on, on other things that uh, I might try. One of the comments mentioned that uh, my issue may be with Tasmo Admin, uh, which is kind of what I use for managing my Tasmo devices um, and felt like that it's pretty resource intensive and that it could be causing some issues uh, with Tasmoda and Home Assistant and everything all together. So today I decided uh, we would do a video on trying to come up with a good Tasmo admin alternative. I really like Tasmo admin. I like the ability to have one location to manage all the devices. You could reboot any of the devices that you wanted to. I also like the ability to update everything from Tasmo admin. That's probably my favorite feature about Tasmo admin is that you could uh, push updates uh, to all, all your devices, only certain devices, whatever you wanted to do, you basically load your uh, bin files uh, in Tasmo admin and tell it what devices you wanted to update and it would take care of the rest. Uh, so I really like that feature. Nonetheless, we're going to look at some alternatives and see what might work out better. All right, so the first one we're going to look at, I think, will be uh, Tasmoda Device Manager, TDM. Uh, so this one seems to be the closest runner-up, I guess, to Tasmo Admin. I feel like it uh, performs pretty well. I think it seems to be almost as big as, uh, as Tasmo Admin with a few uh, key differences. Uh, the other one we're going to look at is TasUI. Now this one comes in as a HasIO add-on. Uh, if you're running HasIO, it's in the uh, in that little app store there to uh, install. If you're doing uh, if you're doing that, uh, it also will run in Docker, which I'm a big uh, Docker guy, which you already know. So uh, definitely uh, interested in that one. All right, well let's move on to the uh, first step and check out uh, Tasmoda Device Manager. All right, so uh, for Tasmoda Device Manager, um, and of course I'll have all the links in the description below, but uh, on their GitHub page, we go to releases. Uh, there's a couple of different choices. It looks like for the most part, TDM runs uh, very well on a Windows machine. It's an EXE file. Um, they do have uh, the source files for you to run it in Linux. I was unable to get it to run in Ubuntu. Uh, I did find a, uh, a, an old thread on running it in Docker, and I tried that as well, and was still unable to get it to run in Docker either. So, for the sake of this tutorial, we're loading it on a Windows machine that I have. I'm not a big Windows guy, so I mainly use Mac and, and Linux, so I was a little disappointed on that part, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to run it in Windows just to take a look at it and see what we think. Probably the main feature that I like about uh, TDM is uh, it does not pull the devices or look for them uh, via their IP address. It's using uh, MQTT, so it looks for the group topics uh, for all the different devices, and it finds them that way, and that's kind of how it communicates with the devices. So that's pretty cool. So, of course, uh, you'll go up in the settings in the top here, and this is where you'll set up your uh, broker information so that it knows how to communicate with those MQTT devices. And of course, you can look through all the settings here. Uh, there's all kinds of little tabs down here at the bottom for different views um, of the devices uh, from health and Wi-Fi and all the different options that they have here. So that's pretty cool. The one feature that I don't like, which I already told you is my favorite feature about Tasmo Admin, is it currently doesn't have a way to push updates 
uh, to those devices. If you look on their GitHub page, it does mention that that is something that they are looking at adding, but it is, of course is not there currently. And like I said before, my main feature that I would be using Tasma Admin for is really pushing updates and rebooting devices if I need to. So uh, on that side of things, uh, TDM is kind of a downside. Let's go ahead and jump over to the next step and take a look at Taz UI. All right, so for with Taz UI, uh, one thing you probably should note is if you see here on their GitHub page, they say that the project has been suspended indefinitely, it looks like, so so not sure if there'll be any further updates uh, to uh, Taz UI or not. Nonetheless, we're gonna check it out and see what we think. All right, so the great thing about Taz UI, as I've kind of already noted, is it will run in Docker. Uh, which I really do like. Uh, so that's how we're going to try to set it up here and see if we can get it working. Uh, so I'm basically going to edit my Docker Compose at YAML file here on an open spot. As you can see, I've commented out my uh, Tasmo admin container, so we'll just add it right underneath there. Um, so for the uh, name, uh, it'll be Taz UI. Container name, again, I'm just going to call it uh, Taz UI. Uh, for the image, it's a IOT reboot slash Taz UI. And then of course you can add colon latest at the end to make sure you get the current version. And I'll have all this in the description below so that you can just copy and paste it. Uh, for the port, uh, it defaults to port 80. I don't generally like to use uh, port 80 with my containers. So I'm going to uh, set it up on port 9999, kind of how I set up uh, Tasmo admin. Uh, so I'm just going to do a 9999 colon 80 for the port. We'll set the restart to always. Once we have all that in there, we can go ahead and save it. And then we'll do a sudo docker-compose up-d. And we'll give that a second to come back up. And then we're going to jump over to portainer. Uh, just to make sure everything looks good with the uh, Docker container. And as you can see here, everything looks like it's up and running and loaded correctly. Uh, there's nothing in the logs, but uh, I, I don't know how exactly that container is set up, so it may not even display anything in the logs. Who knows? Let's go ahead and check out the container itself. So again, we set up Taz UI on port 9999. So we'll open up the browser, uh, put in the IP address of our uh, Docker host machine, colon 9999. Here we are with uh, Taz UI. And of course you can do a discover. It's pretty similar to Tasmo admin in that sense. You put in the IP range that you want to search for and it will pull in all the Tasmo devices in that IP range. So again, uh, on that side of things, it's closer to Tasmo Admin. It does not utilize MQTT like uh, TDM does. For the most part, everything looks pretty similar uh, to uh, TDM. Uh, there's multiple different um, tabs here, uh, like for Wi-Fi, health, and all the different things, just kind of like TDM was as well. The downside to Taz UI is you don't really have the ability to push updates from it either. So neither TDM or Taz UI have the ability to push those updates. So that's kind of a, a downside to both of them. But basically, you get the idea of running either one. It's hard to say if either of these will be any better than Tasmo Admin. Uh, I just don't know right now. I think uh, based on what I've found with these versus Tasmo Admin, I think my plan is just going to be uh, to stick with Tasmo Admin. Uh, probably just not going to run it all the time. Uh, I'll leave it disabled, and then when I need to use it to push updates or whatever, then I'll probably uh, start up the container and kind of go that route. Uh, but that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Uh, uh, again, we were just kind of we were trying to find a good alternative for Tasmo Admin, and I'm just not sure that there is one. Uh, and I'm still feeling pretty good so far about the fact that I've been running without Tasmo Admin uh, for uh, a little while now and have not had any issues with the devices, 
not uh, communicating well with home assistants. So uh, it truly could be one of the issues. I hate that because, like I said, I really like Tazewell Admin. But, uh, you know, I'm okay with just leaving it turned off and using it when I need to. Uh, I think that will work out just fine. If you guys have any other recommendations or ideas, uh, things that I might try, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and we'll certainly check it out and see what we can come up with. As always, I want to thank everybody that has donated to my Buy Me a Coffee link. Every little bit helps. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, jump over to my uh, Teespring merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And as always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.